Now it's time to make our fireworks go bang. And this is easily the best part of the game because it involves even more particle systems. There are three things we need to create. First, a method to explode a single firework. Second, a method to explode all the fireworks, which will actually just call the single firework explosion method again and again. And third, some codes to detect and respond to the device being shaken, which is our signal to explode the fireworks. First, the code to explode a single firework. I'll make some space below the update method and say this, func explode a firework, which is an SK node. Now remember, this is an SK node here because a firework for us is actually a container node with a sprite node and a emitter node inside. We want to get rid of both those at the same time, of course. Inside there, we can say if let emitter is an SK emitter node with the file named explode. That will load our explode.sks file over here. If that succeeds, we'll place the emitter at the position of the firework that's blown up by doing firework position and add that to our scene. Regardless, we have to say also firework dot remove from parent to remove the firework from the game scene. Now you should be able to read that once and know exactly what it does. It creates an explosion where the firework was and removes the firework from the game scene. Next is the explode fireworks method. And it's only fractionally more complicated. It's going to be triggered when the user wants to set off their selected fireworks. So you need to loop through the fireworks array backwards again, pick out any selected ones, then call explode on it. As I said earlier, the player score needs to go up by more when they select more fireworks. So about half of this method is taken up by figuring out what score to give to the player. There's one small piece of extra complexity. Remember, the fireworks array stores the firework container nodes, not the sprite nodes or the emitter nodes, which means you have to read inside the firework image from its children array when we're checking if the name if it's selected or not. Enough talk, let's write some code. We'll say func explode fireworks. We're going to keep track of how many they explode so we can get the score higher and higher when this number's higher. We'll say var num exploded equals zero. Then we're going to loop over the fireworks array backwards, getting the index at the same time thanks to enumerated by saying for index firework container in fireworks dot enumerated dot reversed. We're now going to read out the first child from that node, which should be our firework sprite node, to check whether it's selected or not. Say guard let firework equals firework container dot children dot first as question mark sk sprite node. If that fails for some reason, else continue. Go to the next item in our array. And that should never fail because it's always going to be sprite kit firework nodes inside there. But there's no harm being safe. If we're here, we've got a real firework, great. We can say if firework uh, name is equal to selected, great, it's a selected firework. We can say explode, passing in the firework container, the container node for the sprite node and the emitter node. So the whole thing gets destroyed at the same time. And then we can remove that from our array by saying fireworks.remove at that index and add one to num exploded. Say this exact movement they made is worth at least one firework. It'll get higher and higher and higher. Now for the important part. We can write a switch block based on num exploded to decide how many points they get. Now remember, they're either going to explode zero fireworks, one, two, three, four, or five fireworks. We're going to cater for all those cases. So we'll say switch num exploded case zero, no fireworks, uh, they get no points for that, unsurprisingly. If they had one firework, we'll do score plus equals 200. If they have two fireworks, we'll do score plus equals 500. So more than just two, two fireworks worth. If it's three fireworks, we'll say score plus equals 1500. So lots more points now. And case four, we'll say score plus equals 2500. And finally, the default case, i.e. five fireworks, score plus equals 4,000 points for exploding all five fireworks at the same time. So as you can see, exploding five fireworks gives us 4,000 points, which is 20 times more points than exploding just one firework. Hence the incentive to select groups by color. 
And there's one last thing to do before the game's complete, and that's to detect the device being shaken. This is easy enough to do because iOS will automatically call a method called motion began on our game when the device is shaken. The only slight complexity here is that this method gets called in our game view controller, not in our game scene. That's this UI view controller subclass over here that's been hosting our game scene the entire time. Now that default view controller isn't configured to know that it has an SK view inside it. And it has, certainly has no idea what that scene is showing. So we've got to do a little bit of typecasting. Once that's all done, we can call explode fireworks to trigger our methods being run. So I'm going to scroll around to find some space down here underneath preferred status bar hidden. And I'm going to say motion began and let co-completion fill that in. So what we want to do here is make sure our view is an SK view first. So we can say guard let SK view equals our view as question mark and SK view else return. So if we're showing anything else, just bail out. There's no point in this method being here. Next, does that view show our game scene? Which in this case it will do, but as long as I'm being safe again, guard let game scene equals skview.scene as question mark game scene. Again, else return. So if we're showing any other kind of scene, don't try and call the next method. But if we're still here on line 54, we can now say game scene dot explode fireworks. Explode all the fireworks when the device is shaken. Now, obviously, you can't shake your laptop to make the iOS simulator respond, but you can use a keyboard shortcut to get the same result. Uh, let's try it out now. I'll press Command R to build and run our game in the simulator, and we should be able to select fireworks and explode them. And you'll see up in the hardware menu, there's a shake gesture option here. That thing there, that's Control, Command, and Z, or Z, to make a shake gesture. So I'll try and select a firework here, a white one, or oh, I missed that one too slow. And I'll press Control, Command, Z, there's two green ones here, boom, to explode them. Fantastic. So just press Control, Command, Z, after you select a green and a green, boom, they explode. If I try and mix colors by doing a red, then a green, the red becomes deselected, only have the same color at the same time, which is fantastic. Boom, let's try and get a green, a green, oops, and a green. Ah, oh, too slow. Of course, these are real device testing. It's much, much easier on a real device. Uh, so you can actually test out the shake gesture there, unlike using Control Command Z at Z. Uh, let's get these ones here, almost. There we go, got them all, fantastic.